Five Friday, Friday feedback. Five Friday feedback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a solid intro. I think that's what we're gonna start. That we have time. to start. Is that our new jingle? Five. Yeah, we're just gonna sing it every yep. single time. Yep. And as we go through, our voices are gonna become better. Yeah. Five Friday feedback. Every every week we do a new voice. Five Friday feedback. I don't know. Yeah. I need some water after that. Would you that like one. a Batman? Five Friday feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Guess that impression. <laughs> Yeah, Smeagol mm. one. Oh, that'd be funny. We'll do a few. We'll, yeah. We'll play with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we don't, just remind us. Just remind us. That's pretty solid. No, that is. I like that. So, guys, welcome to uh, Five Friday Feedback. Yeah. Uh, today, we are going to be <laughs> recapping our earlier week. Uh, the reason we do Five Friday Feedback is for a few reasons. Number one is we believe that repetition is the key to cementing new knowledge. Um, so, rather than us telling you to go back to the Monday pod again, which might get a bit boring, even though we are pretty cool. Um, we'll just restate everything in a different way. And if we messed up anything on Monday, we can recount it there. And then we also get the chance to go deep, dive deep into the viewer mailbag. Mm -hmm. And we've got to talk about win of the week. But uh, this week we are talking or recapping investing made simple. Yeah. Yeah. I love the variety that the five Friday feedback provides us too. Cause it's not like, Oh, today, bam, 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 bam. This is what we're talking about. And we got to stay on schedule. We got to stay on Gotta stay on the course. On Five Friday, we can go wherever we want. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very, you know, for our podcast, I always wanted to make sure that we were adding actionable steps every mm -hmm. single time. I, just, I, I love listening to podcasts for entertainment, mm -hmm. but what I even like better is being able to get something from a podcast every single one and say, that was totally worth the 45 minutes to an hour of my time yeah. to invest inside that, and this is what I'm gonna get from it. So if you guys take anything from our podcast, please don't just listen to this for information take action on these things that we're trying to talk about because I can, I promise you from someone who's gone through this, taking the action is what's going to really get you there. But if you are just at a step where you're just trying to learn, that's cool too. But eventually you will have to implement this yeah. in order to make some progress. Yeah. Well, with that getting started, yeah, let's I start with the moving. recap. Yeah, let's go with the recap. Yeah. I love it. All righty. So last week, investing made simple part one. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because Monday, we're doing a little part two on it. Yep. Is it two part, three part? Uh, it's going to be, I, you know, I think it's, I think we can do it in a two part. I think so. You know, I mean, th this whole podcast, um, it's really about making sure that we set a good framework mm -hmm. because next podcast in, in part two, we're going to talk about specific things that we recommend investing in. But again, we talked about so much in this podcast. We're going to recap it here in a second about having a long term perspective. Because I can tell you, I'm a financial advisor. I'm very good at my job. I don't know what the market's going to do tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to do next week. I don't know what it's going to do next month. Even next year. I have a guess, but uh, but the farther, the, the closer we are, I have no idea. The farther out I have, you know, in the next 10 days, I don't know. In the next 10 years, I have a good idea. In the next 100 years, I'm nearly certain yeah. that it's going to be up. Yeah. So, segment one, the importance of investing, like we were talking about. You can't win if you don't play. <laughs> yep. You can't win if you don't play. You got to get in the game. Yep, you got to get in the game. And in, in that segment, what we talked about a lot is instead of focusing on the specific knowledge, mm -hmm. I had my, um, my little coin example. Yep. And I said, let's talk. And we're going to focus instead on the habits. Yeah. 80 to 90% of personal finance and being good with money has to do with your habits and your behaviors. That other 10 to 20% is the actual knowledge of investing. But even if we never get that really, really good ways of investing and learning all that stuff, you can still be so great with money just by focusing on how much money we make and how much money we spend. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I heard this recently and it went like winners and losers have the same exact goal, mm -hmm. but the loser focuses on the outcome and the winner focuses on the work that gets you to the outcome. Yep. And I love that. Like we need to save for retirement, save for Whatever our rainy day is, whatever we, whatever our goal is, our why is, you know, but focusing on the day to day, you know, things we actually spend our money on and making smart moves, that's where it actually has an impact. Yeah. And I think that what you just said there, it's, it's focusing on the journey, not the destination. You know, in order to get the destination, it takes one step at a time to get there. And we've said it a few times, comparison is the thief of joy. So remember, you're not playing this game against other people. This is a game only internal to yourself that you're focusing on and getting on just a little bit better every day when it comes to finances. 
I, I'm not expecting anyone to listen to this podcast and immediately start doing options trading. I mean, shoot, I'm never going to even recommend that you guys do options trading. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty wild. Yeah, they're pretty wild. I did it for a while, and uh, it's 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 a huge time commitment. And in next podcast, I'm going to tell you a far easier way. Yeah. Um, you know, I've gone through all of it, and now I'm here, and I'm going to tell you what I wish I knew at the beginning. Um, but yeah, the, and then we emphasize the power of compounding interest. And we talked mm-hmm. about it's like a snowball, just yep. going down a hill. At first, it starts about the size of your fist, and then by the time it reaches the bottom of the hill, it ends up being enough to tear down a building or take down a house. Yep. But unlike a snowball moving downhill, this is actually going uphill. Yeah, yeah. Next, we talked about risk versus reward. Yep. That's super important. You don't want to be too risky. You don't want to be... But you do want to have a little bit of risk. Mm-hmm. You got to have a little bit of skin in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that think, "Oh, well, it's okay. I'll just I'll take my my hundred thousand dollars or the the, the ten thousand dollars I've saved up, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to put it in my bank account. Or I'm going to put it underneath my bed, yeah. or I'm going to lay on it like a dragon. And I'm never going to leave it. No, nope. because in ten years I'll still have my ten thousand dollars. And you're exactly right. You will have that ten thousand dollars, and that's great. But what did you? sacrifice in order to still have that ten thousand dollars which you sacrificed was your purchasing power because while you might have still have the same amount of money you forgot about the hidden cost of inflation yeah so there is still something acting against that so that ten thousand dollars in ten years might only be worth seven thousand dollars six thousand dollars eight thousand dollars worth of purchasing power which you can actually go out and buy and you know we can think about that and just the the cost of uh, of cost of eggs cost of milk cost of just normal things in life after COVID, we've seen things dramatically increase. And you can look inside your own supermarket and you can tell me that if I'm wrong, but those prices have not gone back down. I mean, you can even just look at like the price of homes. <laughs> yeah. You know, even in the last like three years, somehow they've doubled. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's, it's, and I don't know, and I don't say amazing as a good thing. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's just, it's wild. It's wild. I'm not for them going up. I'm not for them going down. It's just interesting. No, you're right. And, and I like that you say that. You're not for it either way, but it is what it is. And you have mm-hmm. to work within what we have. Yeah. Um, you know, our podcast is mostly geared towards people in our age demographic. It's really funny. I'm looking at the statistics on, on, our, on, our, on who we're reaching. And we're reaching people within your age group to my age group. And Perfect. we're not that different. So it's, it's good. Um, for advisors, most advisors find that they have the most success with people who are five years younger and five years older than them. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Because I would, I would think that like financial advisors, the most of the people they would probably see are people going into retirement. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I feel like a, a lot of younger people need to get in this game because mm-hmm. that's when it counts. Yep. It, like it, you said with compounding. Yep. It, it does count and you're exactly right. I mean, as an advisor, um, I have clients that are retired, but I love focusing on the younger people because retirees, they've made their decisions and now we're here and we're going to make the best of the situations they've made. Yep. But the young people, that's what really lights me up. That's what that's why we created this podcast, is so we can try to reach as many people as we can with this message, um, you know, <laughs> the, the doctrines of FI. Yep. Uh, that way we can help people along the path because like Dom said, it's these micro habits over time compounded that's gonna set you up for just the most amazing life. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to s- a try to achieve FI in order to no longer work again. I, I don't want that to be anyone's goal, but. There is no one that putting some of these habits in will not help. No. They're for everyone. Yep. They are for everyone. Also, in segment three, we talked a little bit about roller coasters. <laughs> Six Flags, Disneyland. I love roller coasters. Uh, we love Chris Lake's roller coasters. I'm not a big roller coaster guy. Really? I'm not a big roller coaster guy. As a kid, I was really, really afraid of them. And then I think well, through like Stoicism and Buddhism, I kind of like lost my fear of death. Or I still have a fear of death, but yeah. like... It's gone away. It's gone away. Yeah, it's it's just part of the journey. It's now part of the journey, and I'm more excited about it. You know, I I I'm not too afraid of death. You know, it's just part of the part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Part of the journey is the end. But I'm just not a big roller coaster guy. Now, granted, if you're like Dom, you're getting on this roller coaster. We're going to Disneyland. You're getting on this uh, coaster. I'd probably get on it, and I probably would have a great time. Mm-hmm. I probably would have a great time. But I just haven't gone. It's just like one of those things. It's like. Nah, you know, I, I'm good. I'll tell you a fun story about I love roller stories. coasters. Okay. Um, so my growing up in high school, I had my best group of, of guy friends. There mm-hmm. were five of us. Mm-hmm. So every during our senior year, we would all chip in to buy each other like a, a bigger gift. Okay. So for one of the guys, we all we all chipped in and we got five tickets to Six Flags. So we could all go to Six Flags together and have an amazing day. We actually ended up going on Super Bowl Sunday. So 
Pro tip, oh. go to theme parks if you're near a theme park on Super Bowl Sunday. There was literally no one there. I don't remember who was playing, so it doesn't matter to me. Interesting. Um, I went to Super Bowl Sunday, and one of my friends, um, he is very, we'll call him John, he is very afraid of roller coasters. So John was just riding the same roller coaster because Six Flags, like, it's all big roller coasters. Yeah. So he rode a roller coaster and he's like, okay, I've done this once. I feel familiar with it. This monster that I know is less scary than the monsters that I don't know. So he just rode the same ride over and over and over again while the four other guys, we went and we did all the other rides. So eventually uh, there's a roller coaster. Back in the day it was called X2. I think I've heard about. Yeah, that. there was X, and is eventually that like the became, Superman one. No, it's different. It's okay. it's, it's scarier than than. So there, Six Flags was like known for X two. It's like their scariest ride, and I knew that John didn't know about X two. So I told John like, "Hey man, you, you need a like you need to come ride with us for for one more trip. Like this is our friend's birthday. Just come and ride X two with us. And I promise you, if the ride you wrote, if your ride you know right now is like a four, this is like a five. So it's not that bad. So he's like, "All right, fine, I'll, I'll go and ride X two with you guys." So we're in line, and we, we finally get to the front. And I, I'm not lying when I say that this is one of those ones for people on the people on the pod. I'll just try to explain the best I can. You basically sit backwards, and then there's this contraption that like links over you like a chest plate. Then it links down onto you to your crotch. Then there's another thing that links up so that your head doesn't come up. So he's finally all linked in, and I'm sitting there watching him get linked in. He's like, man, this is a lot for like a five on the scary scale. And now that he's fully locked in, I'm like, okay. So I sit down and we're facing each other. And I'm like, oh, hey, John, just so you know, this is like an 11 on the scary scale. <laughs> and he's like, what? And then Enter Sandman from Metallica starts and then the ride goes. And the ride is just so much fun, but it is, it's a heck of a ride. So at the end of it, we finally get in and we pull in and I'm like, John, what'd you think of the ride? And he goes, I hate you. <laughs> But uh, afterwards, uh, after, just like you said, yeah. I said, what would you think about it? He said, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, yeah. He made the monster to be much scarier in his mind than it was. And it's the same thing of investing. Good Lord. I yeah. forgot we were talking about investing. No, we were, yeah, we were I totally forgot. I'm glad you looped it back in because I was like, I was like, oh, this is a good story. I think in stories. Yeah, but, I, know, I, I think it's important because, you know, again, it just becomes the, the fear of the unknown is what holds us back. And that's what I think about a lot of people investing. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm not saying that you need to be the best immediately, but you need to start to take steps. Um, you know, when I started my jujitsu journey, mm -hmm. there was no way that I could walk in there and, and beat a black belt. But nowadays, I'm actually kind of able to hold my own for a little bit. Or think about it like this. John, if you wanted to go to the gym and mm -hmm. bench press 300 pounds, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. You're gonna hurt yourself. I but probably would. What do you do? You start with 100 pounds. You start building up, and then eventually, over time, that 100 pounds becomes 110, 120, 130, 140. Um, it's just like that with FI mm -hmm. and achieving financial independence. We start slowly, yeah. but eventually we're going to get there. But even if we never achieve that 300-pound that bench, our lives have been dramatically increased yeah. just, by the, just by the fact that we are striving for something, getting better every day. And we never know just by achieving phi, like we've talked about, or trying to achieve phi, what other aspects of your life are gonna improve. Just yeah. like with fitness, too. Yeah, yeah. So true, so true. You just gotta jump in. Yeah, you gotta jump in, you gotta get started, and it doesn't need to be a full plunge. You can even just tip, tip your dough in the water. But I'm gonna tell you that I think jumping in is the best way to go. Yeah. Uh, but it's really up to you. Again, personal finance is personal. Absolutely, absolutely. What do we talk about after that? If we talk about the long-term perspective, or we talk about roller coasters. Yep, we talk about market fluctuations yep. and how like market goes up, market goes down, but it goes. What were you saying? It goes up and to the right. Yeah, it goes up and like to the right. So what I what I what if I, you're looking at a chart, if you're looking at a chart, go into any index, go into S and P five hundred, go yep. into uh, the Dow Jones, Nasdaq. Mm -hmm. You can look at it. Go into it by hour by hour. And I'll tell you, that thing looks like an EKG of someone who is going through a full aneurysm. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's wild. It's all over the place. And yeah. if someone, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, if they're the layman and they look at that, they're like, oh man, that's really scary. And mm -hmm. then you go ahead and you turn on NBC, CS, whatever, I don't know, NBC, you know, the, CNN, the, the, the news Fox news, news yeah. is everything's going to be again, super, super scary and make you even more worried to look at those things. But again, if you take this long-term perspective on that same chart, you're looking at minute by minute. Look at it at five years, look at it at 10 years, look at it at 100 years, and you're gonna see that it's up and to the right, yep. exactly what you wanna see. And we're in it for the long-term growth. Yep. We're not here for short-term money. No, 
Yeah, and that's the key. That's the key. Just staying invested. Invest early, stay invested, and you'll be good. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people, um, especially clients of mine, as they're kind of onboarding, they say, I'm afraid of investing because I feel that it is gambling. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, it depends on how you're investing. If you ask me, Chris, is Tesla going to be up or down tomorrow? I might as well flip a coin and tell you yes or no. But uh, maybe Tesla isn't the greatest example because in 100 years, I don't know. But let's just say the stock market. Chris, in general, the stock market would be up or down tomorrow. 50% heads, 50% tails. I don't know if it's going up or down. But Chris, is the stock market going to be up in 100 years? Well, now that coin is a double-sided coin and it's probably going to hit heads every time. Yeah. Yeah, and... The market is resilient. Mm -hmm. It's very resilient. And there are historical trends to back up what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We've been through many pandemics in this country. Great depressions, regular depression, personal depression. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of depressions. And uh, the market has always gone up. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's just to think of it yourself, um, let's say we all hop in a time machine together. You, Dom, you and myself, and we go back to the 90s. Remember the 90s when things made sense? In sync. Boys to men, dude. If you, could, if boys. you could go back and just like stuck in time for a generation, would you like to be in the '90s? I, I grew up in the '90s. Like I, I was a kid of the '90s, and like I don't know. I, do you think? Do you think? Do you wish like the '90s was still like present? Well, again, I can only reflect on it as of, as when I was a kid. When yeah. I was a kid, like my parents took care of me. Like everything yeah. was just kind of like it, just, cool. it was it was cool. Yeah. Now I'm an adult and things are different. Like would I rather be a kid and an adult? 100% adult. Being an adult is pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Um, I don't know, but the 90s were just fun. So let's just imagine we hop inside anyway. there. Insync's playing. We're bye bye bye. Um, <laughs> okay. Is that Backstreet Boys or which one did that? I'm the wrong guy for that. Okay, well I'm 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 a 90s kid, but I, I was born in 98. Okay. So I'm like I'm kind of a fraud in that aspect. But. Okay, I was 91, so I've been okay. around. I okay. made it through the whole thing. But we go back to the 90s and. I'm trying to get you to invest. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey guys, I know what the future holds. I came from the year 2023. Next year, when 2000, or it, when 2000 happens, everyone thinks the world's gonna end and, the, and then the stock market's gonna be destroyed. In 2008, a bunch of bankers are gonna make some very, very difficult and complex financial instruments that they don't even understand. And then they're going to basically collapse the entire US economy by over leveraging homes. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, we're gonna have a global pandemic that's going to destroy the entire world and put it and bring it down to its knees. Yeah. Anyone in the 1990, or anyone in 1999 would go, okay then, I'm not gonna invest for the, for the next 20 years. Yeah. And based off what I just told you, you'd be exactly correct. But had you invested in 1999 till now, 2023, you would have realized an annual compounded rate of 12% per year. On average, what we say here on the Five Guys is the market over the last 120 years of it's been around has on the high end, 8%. So over those 20 years of terrible things happening, we, we went through multiple wars. Multiple wars. You know, we had 9-11. I didn't even talk about 9-11. We had 9-11. There were so many things that happened. Yeah. 12% annualized over those 23 odd years. It's pretty good. That's the, the that's that's fantastic. Pretty good. That's fantastic. Shout out to you, America. Yeah, shout out to America. <laughs> shout out to the world because now we're a global system. Yeah, yeah. You know, that just really shows the resiliency, yeah. and how we never know what's going to happen. I mean, just look at the difference between two thousand eight to COVID and those those depressions. Two thousand eight took years for it to come back. COVID took three weeks. You know, the stock yeah. market went all down thirty percent and then was back up above its high in three months. This is wild. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Uh, the Federal Reserve started pumping, pump more money, and it's called stimulus. Yeah. 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 Didn't they print like more money in like those like three years than they had in like? Yep. Yeah. yeah they made the more family. money in like three weeks. Made like not like I didn't make money today. Like no, I mean like physically printed more money. Oh, they didn't physically print it. They just added it to the ledger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so. That's so. You want a scary, a scary thing? This is outside of what we're talking yeah. about right now, but. Um, in terms, I'm not exactly, I can't remember exactly what it is, but say there's 100% of money, mm -hmm. only 2% of that actually has physical dollars to it. Dude, that's wild. That's concerning. Yeah. So you can just make up a number. Well, banks do, not us. Damn. Damn. I, I, try to get, I want to go into like my bank account and be like, edit, add a couple commas in there, we'll be good. If, if, if you go into the bank right now and you say, I need to take $10,000 out, yeah. 
most banks don't have ten thousand dollars in the bank. Wild. To, to give to one person, they have more than mm -hmm. that, but then they yeah, know yeah. like if someone else did that, if like a hundred people came in, yep, that's what a bank run is. Yeah, and that's that's what the Federal Reserve is there to try to stop is bank runs. Yeah, we, well, uh, if you guys want to, if you, that's interests you, and you guys want to talk about like what is money and what is fractional fractional reserve, what is M one M two money supplies, let us know in the comment. If we're going to get a little bit more theoretical in those types of discussions, but I would love to have those if that's something I would like love to have. to have just a podcast. Just what is money. Okay, we can I do that. that. We can do that, and it wouldn't go too crazy. I just don't no. want to get too deep to work. Yeah, well, you like, could. I mean, it's a rabbit hole, and you could go a hundred feet down. Yeah, like, it gets it gets wild. Getting back on track. Yeah, <laughs> you know, getting back a little bit back on track. Segment four. Can't believe we're on four already. Yeah, uh, the market is resilient. And uh, we talked about the market resiliency and historical trends while highlighting opportunities for various investment strategies. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the different, the different stages of life, as it were. You know, when mm -hmm. someone's younger, they can have the time horizon for being more aggressive. And more risky. And more risky. When they're older, things need to change a little bit. And maybe we are going to be looking at the bonds and the CDs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we'll go more into that in the next pod in part two when we're going to actually be talking about more specifics of investing. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, we talked about, again, just the patience. The the um, patience and persistence, yeah. the importance of patience and persistence, uh, and just making sure that we have that long-term time horizon, mm -hmm. that is really the key here. Absolutely. Like if you take nothing away, when we invest, we invest for the long-term. Yep, yep. I mean, you gotta prepare for tomorrow mm -hmm. and tomorrow of 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was actually trying to create like a new hashtag for my business card um, and you know, I actually don't remember what I what I did for it. All right, let's see this. Oh, let's see here. Reaching out of frame. Reaching out of frame. That's okay. I crop us in, so <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, well, so I edited my my business card to be balancing wealth and well being by integrating planning with purpose. That's pretty solid. So making Can sure chat that ChatGPT that uh, a little bit of ChatGPT okay. and then a little bit of me. So there you go. But yeah, okay. we're trying to again. We're, we're making sure we have that long term perspective when we're planning. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, we're also tying that in to what the person's goals are. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do with all my clients and whatnot. That's pretty sweet. Thanks, dude. That's pretty sweet. I like that. I'm a fan of that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Damn. I just made it yesterday. I like that. Um, so that was pretty much what we talked about there. Again, key highlights are that we have a long-term time horizon when we invest. What the market's gonna do tomorrow, I have no idea. What it's gonna do next week, no idea. Next month, no idea. Next year, kind of an idea, but really, it's, it's an educated guess. Mm -hmm. But in the next 100 years, I have a good idea, given that we don't blow ourselves up. But if we do blow ourselves up, we have bigger things to talk about than your retirement money. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, I, I like to tell my clients this because they always say, well, Chris, what happens if, uh, if the world goes, what if we get invaded by, by Russia and all these other things happen? Then what about my retirement? And I say, well, man, in that case, you should have invested in precious metals. And mm -hmm. by precious metals, I don't mean gold. I mean bullets in cans of food. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I, have, I love I love prepping. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, you're oh, a big I'm, prepper. I'm a big prepper. I love it. When I when I move out, I'm gonna get some chickens. Hopefully, the HOA is cool with it. I'm just gonna have to give a lot of people a lot of eggs. But if you move to certain parts of Phoenix, you can do whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm tempted. I'm gonna get some chickens. I'm gonna grow some potatoes, asparagus. It's gonna be a garden because you know I love gardening. I have to imagine that I'm gonna go to your house one day. You're gonna have you're gonna like have a di giant hole with like a vented system down down in there. It would be like a mole man. You know, Dude. <laughs> like a Chris, silo. Chris knows me better than I thought he knows me. He knew me because that's 100% the plan. Yeah. I would love you, nothing more than to have a bunker. You ever seen, I, you ever seen Breaking Bad? Uh, a little bit of it, yeah. There's a scene where they make they have like a meth lab underground. Yeah. I just imagine that for you. Not obviously a meth Not lab, obviously a but meth like lab. an entire home underneath the ground. That's 100% the yeah. plan. 100, like I'm telling you, that is the game. That's, a, that's the end game. Like, you're a D-Day prepper. I'm, a, I'm not even a D-Day prepper. I'm just a, I don't like people and I'm just going to like dig underground and just live my life. Yeah. You're going to become paler than you currently are. Dude, I'll have to get some sunbeds. Yeah, sunbeds and sun. there's going to be popping vitamin D's all, yeah, <laughs> vitamin D all, all the time. Day. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. For your, your yearly trip to Costco, just get the whole thing <laughs> vitamin D. <laughs> Dude, that's the move. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, I don't be... know. Can, can Amazon deliver underground? I'll have, I'll like a you have a shoot. Just, you have like a you shoot. put it right here and just like there bring it go. down. Oh, that'd be sick. Well, guys, I say we get into the viewer mailbag because someone wrote into us and I haven't seen it. So, yep. How are we looking this week, Dom? All righty, Fi Friday feedback viewer mailbag. All right, is this this is like what week two? Week three. Week three. We have we have 
helped two people thus far about to help three. Hopefully this is a happy one. I don't know. Um, you let me know and I will take notes as I always do. This one is not a happy one. Oh this man. One, this one's not, not great. Not great. Uh, I'm not, I'm going to be myself when reading it. Usually, however I display sadness, I'm always going to have a smile on my face. That's like my default. Okay. Some people have resting RBF. RBF. <laughs> thank you. Uh, they just, they just, you know, when they rest their face and they're walking around, they just look pissed, mm -hmm. right? I have resting happy face, right? Oh. So I, I just, I walk around with a smile on my face all day. So I, I have RBF, so. No, no, you're good, you're good. So, um, yeah, I mean, I got snacks in the fridge and Chris to my side, so what could be worse? There we go. Uh, alrighty, so today's viewer mailbag on the Fry Friday feedback. Getting right into it. My wife passed away and left a horrible financial situation. I need advice. Mm. Alrighty. So, hey, Five Guys. I, I First off, it's a great way to address us. <laughs> hey, Five Guys, or howdy, Five Guys. Big fan of the howdies. Howdy, Five Guys. I'm a 32-year-old active duty military member. Okay. Shout out to those guys. Those guys are amazing. And gals. Hoorah. Hoorah. Yes, sir. Uh, for the past decade, my wife managed all of our finances. Okay. Holding a general power of attorney to handle things during my multiple deployments. I didn't spend much. <clears throat> I didn't spend much, and always sought her approval for purchases. Uh, I tend to stress easily, and I was content to let her take care of everything. Tragically, my wife passed away unexpectedly last month, leaving me and my nine-year-old child, who has special needs. After a month, wow. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. Um, after a month, I've finally been able to piece things together for the financial situation she left behind, uh, which has been nothing short of a nightmare, okay? I'm torn between grief and anger at this point. Here are some critical points. Approximately 29,000 in credit card debt spread across three maxed out credit cards. Around 12,000 in unsecured debt, uh, comprising three personal loans from our bank and three loans through a firm, okay? We have two cars uh, with 8,000 left on my car and I'm planning to sell hers next week. Fourth and final point, there are there's still 560,000 on the mortgage, which is approximately worth 700,000. Okay, so the house went up in value, 140,000. Uh, I visited NFCU today. What's NFCU? What do we got? Uh, based off context there, I'm gonna assume it's Navy Federal Credit Union. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's like a bank, but it's a credit union. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a bank. I actually bank with one of my oh, banks. Cool, cool, cool. I visited uh, Navy Federal Credit Union today to explore my options, and the outcome was twofold. Uh, a consolidation loan won't work because of our credit score that has been negatively impacted by her actions, making us ineligible. Home equity, like a HELOC or home equity, home equity line of credit, uh, is also not feasible as our current 3% interest rate will skyrocket to 8%, at least 8%, given the current rates for my credit score. Moreover, I no longer have her income to rely on. I'm uncertain about what steps to take and where to turn for guidance from a man in times of strife, a man in times of strife rebuilding his life after the loss of his wife. Alrighty. Well, that that's not um, that's too bad. That is too bad. That's too bad. Uh, yeah. Just give me a sec. Um, yeah. Not not great. Not great. Not great. But they do have a wonderful little little child. They didn't specify boy or girl, but they have a wonderful little child. That's pretty awesome. He's healthy. That's pretty awesome. And. Um, there, he's willing to get help. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into this in just a second. Uh, just give me... Oh, this one's hitting me more than I thought it would. Uh, first off, man... Uh, one sec. First off, um, I'm really sorry to hear that you, you lost your wife, man. Uh, I think this is hitting me hard because I, I know what it's like to be... You know, if I was losing my spouse, I don't know where I would be. Um, and another thing is, I grew up in a military family, mm -hmm. and I've seen this multiple times with with friends and uh, people who I've been close to. I've seen it both the the active duty military spouse dying, and then I've seen the opposite. Um, so obviously, I don't know the pain, but I've I've seen it. Uh, so 
again, I'm sorry. Uh, most important thing to remember is this is just money. Uh, you, know, I, you need to give yourself the time to grieve and spend time with your kid. And remember, first and foremost, your mental health comes first. You can't, you can't be focusing on this stuff if it's going to be a detriment because you need to be there for yourself and most importantly, your child. Um, you know, all financial things can be fixed, but your family, yourself, if we go down too dark of a road, I've seen people never come back from that. Finances can always be fixed. I promise you that. Um, let's get into to the actual finances. Sorry, sorry about that. It, uh, yeah. So first off, it sounds like most of the unsecured debt, honestly, man, is just noise. That's all it is. Uh, you told us that you have bad credit, you have a house with a great rate, and hopefully a, a solid car. Uh, I, would con- I would consider right now, first off, let, let's set aside the unsecured debt. And what that means is your, your credit cards and your personal loans from a bank and a firm, just for a bit. Um, some of them, honestly, may be discharged due to the loss of your spouse. And some of them you may be able to settle due to the nature of the circumstance. Um, but for now, I would respond to the, to the debt collectors as they're calling and just letting them know, at least once a month and let them know that you are working on a debt repayment plan and you'll let them know as soon as you can. But be kind, be courteous. We've talked about that in, in previous podcasts. Um, you've already said that your, your, your credit's already tanked. I would just let those continue to just kind of tank your credit um, as we focus on you building yourself up and being there for your family. Um, Obviously, I, I, I understand the military pretty well, so I would speak with your CEO, uh, your commanding officer, uh, and make sure that your job's protected. Uh, many positions in the military, they have special background clearance, and having bad personal finances or having a bankruptcy or anything against that can actually affect your job. So please speak to your CEO and let them know what's going on. I'm sure they're aware that your, your wife passed away already, uh, but, but you also need to let them know about the financial situation as to what's going on so that they can help you. Um, your commanding officer, they are there to help you, first, first and foremost. Um, so setting aside the $41,000 of unsecured debt and one car, I got to ask you, can you handle the car payment and the house payment by yourself? If you can, then I say that we continue to do that. Um, Additionally, have you applied for social security benefits for your child yet? Your wife was, sounds like she was working, so you can apply for social security benefits in order to help to bridge that gap in case you can't pay for the car and the house by yourself. You know, everyone falls down and luckily the federal government, we, we are here, we, we all pool together, that's what we pay taxes for is to help in situations like this when people fall down. Um, so we're, we're, we're all trying to help you there. Um, additionally, Let's see here. Oh, you also might want to look and see if any of the credit cards, loans, or bank accounts have any life insurance policies on them. Sometimes they do, and that might actually be able be a good way to pay off that forty-one thousand um, dollars. While Dom was reading, I went on and I went to the VA's uh, website. Active duty spouses and active duty members are covered by life insurance through the military, so you should definitely look into that as well for active duty. Military members, it's half a million dollars, five hundred thousand. But for spouses, it's, it's usually around a hundred thousand dollars in tax-free money that could come to you. So you can apply for that, and that'll get you a hundred thousand dollars. That's going to wipe out the the debt immediately. So that's why I said we're not even going to worry about that. Um, so yeah, you definitely need to con- contact the VA and um, provide a death certificate, and you should be able to settle all that debt no problem. So please, please do that. Let your commanding officer know. Um, and then you also said that your wife has income. So that means, or she had income that, that was paying towards the house and everything. So that indicates that she had a job. Many employers actually have life insurance that's automatically enrolled when you're working in. So I would also contact her job and see if there, that policy was in place or if there was a policy in place, because that could be some extra money um, to also be able to, to do that. And, and if, if all that didn't help, you can always reach out to me at monzonwealth.com. Uh, I know all this seems overwhelming, um, but it's just like the military. You know what you need to do. You just have to prioritize and execute. Don't try to look at this as a whole picture that we need to fix it right now. Just focus one thing at a time and just knock it off, knock it off, knock it off, to or knock things down until we get there. 
And, and again, man, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, please, please honestly remember that it's just money. Give yourself the time to grieve. Give yourself the time to be there with your kids. And uh, Dom and I are sending you big hugs from Arizona. Definitely, definitely. That's, yeah, a, that's that, a tough one. Yeah, that, that uh, I, I was almost crying when you, when you read that. I try not to lose it. Um, you know, th this case, is, it, it shows the importance of talking with your partner and, and being there for your partner uh, when it comes, and being on the same page when it comes to money. Obviously, he said that money stresses him out, and, and I'm not, not doubting that. And I, I know it's really, really tough, but I've seen this situation pan out multiple times mm -hmm. where one spouse is in charge of everything and then when they pass away that other spouse is left holding the bag and I've also seen that there are people there are people in this world that will go after those kinds of people um, to maliciously take you know take what they can um, I've seen advice I've seen bad advisors or brokers do that um, you know th that's what a lot of the life insurance industry is geared towards they, that's where they work in funeral homes mm -hmm. is because it's up and people are thinking about it um, yeah, that's that's yeah. tough. So as we're doing the Phi crash course, obviously I'm writing this as we're kind of moving through, and I've been kind of considering should we do a uh, an insurance portion of the Phi crash course because it is important to have that risk mitigation. And th th this th this put it in perspective, and I will definitely do that um, probably in in the next two. Mm -hmm. We'll be we'll be doing that. I'll be adding that that in there. Um, yeah. And also one thing that that I noticed that you said that you're you're torn between grief and anger with your wife over what's going on. Um, dude, I, I know that your wife was doing the best that she can, and I understand the anger. I, I really do, but I know that she wasn't trying to hurt you. I remember, everyone does the best they can with the knowledge that they have, and I'm sure that's the same for your wife, and I'm sure if she knew a better way that she would have done it, uh, but she only knew what she knew, and I've seen this in my own life, so please t take what we're talking about here because the type, type of things that we are talking about can change a life so that you don't have to go through this. If, if we can stop one person from having to go through something like this, then all the time that we put into this podcast is 100% worth it to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I say we, we move on to something positive and do win of the week. Something positive, win of the week. Yeah. Uh, we got two two things for win of the week. You go first and then I, I, gotta, I still gotta like. <laughs> you gotta, gotta dial in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so for my win of the week is my mom had my mom had some little, little extra cash lying around. My mama had. My mama had. <laughs> she saw she had some extra monies lying around, uh, and rather than just letting inflation eat it up, because uh, yeah, we we don't want that. No, we don't want that. No. We invested it in a. I think it was a mutual. Was it a mutual fund? Chris helped us with it because Chris is like the genius of this area. It was a. Uh, it was, what was it was a it? money market. It fund. was a money market. I get those confused with okay. uh, money markets and like index funds and like all this like different stuff. So we did that mm -hmm. with I think Schwab and yeah, I mean now the money is being put to work. Yep. And I, we really didn't have to do much. Just now it keeps pace with inflation. It, it will for a little while, but yeah, yeah I mean again. With your mom, when we worked with her, we had to make sure that we I, I geared it towards her current risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. Now, will that money market be the thing she's going to stay invested in forever? No. But right now, it has a pretty good yield, and mm -hmm. I know your mom is very risk averse, so it's something that yeah. she can stay in for a little while. And then when the when the world changes, we will change and adapt with the world as well. Absolutely. You know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you guys. I'm here for your mom. I'm here for for for, for the audience. Absolutely. So, if you guys need anything? Please feel free to reach out. Definitely. And uh, Chris, you got a, you got a win of the week. I do got a win of the week. Win of the week. Uh, this one, this one's kind of a fun one. Um, I actually was able to secure Paramount Plus for free. Movie nights at Chris. Yeah, so now I have Paramount Plus, and the way I was able to do that is, you know, I'm really big into credit cards and credit card hacking. Um, and here, I want people to do this, or if you know about this too, the American Express Platinum Card. It's kind of like a coupon book. You get a bunch of different things, but Dom, you want to ask me like, how do you assess if you're going to keep a credit card or not keep a credit card? And then what I said is that you have to look at all the value you're getting from the card. And if it is over or at least near the value that you have to pay for the card, then it might be worth keeping that card. So American Express is kind of hard because it's $700. That's how much the annual fee is every year that I pay. Okay. And I get a bunch of benefits from that. But yeah. I always need to constantly assess and say, am I getting $700 worth of value out of this credit card? Yeah. Well, Paramount Plus is actually not provided for free through American Express. But what is provided for free is Walmart Plus. 
Mm-hmm. So what I did is I signed up for Walmart Plus. I don't really ever shop at Walmart, but through Walmart Plus, you get Paramount Plus for free. <laughs> so for anyone that has an American Express card, you can get Paramount Plus for free by first going to Walmart Plus, sign up for Walmart Plus, and then after you sign up for that, you get you can go to Paramount Plus, tell them you're a Walmart Plus member, and then you get Paramount Plus for free. So by two things removed, American Express Platinum card can get you Walmart or get you Walmart and Paramount Plus for free. That's wild. So just adding a little bit more value. That's so that's so wild. Yeah, thus far I haven't found too much on Paramount Plus, but they do have the Yellowstone prequels, 1883 and 1927 or whatever mm-hmm. they are. So my wife and I started that recently, and then they have some of the South Park movies on there. Okay. And there are some pretty funny ones. I haven't seen South Park in years, so. No, I never got, I never got into South Park. Oh, okay. I never got into South Park, but Paramount, mm, that's pretty cool. Walmart Plus is cool. Oh really? It's sick. I've never. I I only signed up for it because I already Prime. Sorry, yeah. I just signed up for it just to get Paramount Plus. It's sick. Okay, well I'll look into yeah. it. It's it's here on my shopping. If you're tab. like me, I don't like going to Walmart. I just don't like going to Walmart. It's many reasons, but mostly because it's just like it's, it's always dirty. It's a little bit messy. It's always a, busy. Are you a Target man? I hate. I I don't like going shopping. Oh, okay. Well. I don't like shopping at all. It, it's inefficient. Just buy it online and get it done. Like, but at the same time, like. Chris and I, we don't eat that much food. I eat more food than Chris because Chris eats once a day. But, like, I, get, I just go to Costco. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, everything I need, I can just buy in bulk. I wish I Costco just... was closer to our house, though. I know. It's they need to build one, like, right out here. They do. That would be so There's epic. so much desert. <laughs> so much desert. So much land. But, um, no, Walmart Plus is sick because they'll deliver it to your house. I don't know how much how much time we've been on going. I didn't try to set the time. Uh, I think we're at, like, 47 minutes. Okay. Somewhere perfect. Around there. But, um, I just yeah, make Walmart sure that Plus. We're being, and, uh, Walmart Plus, and we got your mom's money invested. Bing, bang, boom. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about? I think that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Well, please tune in for this coming Monday. We're going to be talking about Investing Made Simple. Part two, we're actually going to be going more into specifics. Again, in this podcast, we talked, or in the last podcast, we talked a lot about the importance of a long-term time horizon and sticking the course that once you invest in. So investing for the long-term, not for short-term. Um, remember, we do have a new fee for the show. I'm not going to ask for your credit card. I'm not going to ask you to send me money. But if you found value from the show, please tell one friend about it. Yeah. We're trying to build this community as big as we possibly can. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Like, subscribe. Later. Peace. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.